Right, hello there, it's Kate again. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do something a little different. I'm in the middle of a knitting project. That would be this right here. And this particular pattern makes really interesting use of short rows. And I thought that might be a good opportunity to do a little tutorial, a little explanation of short rows and give some examples of the different things that short rows can do. Um, so before I get into an actual demonstration with this project and I'm and show off some of the ways this, pro this particular project uses short rows, I'm going to talk a little bit about what they are, how they work, and give some other examples. So um, at its simplest, a short row is basically any row that's shorter than your full row. So you go part of the way through a row, you stop, you turn around, you go back, either all the way to the beginning or part way to the beginning. What this is going to do is it's going to add some extra fabric into that section that you're going back and forth in. Um, and you can either use it as this one does for adding different shapes and creating angles in the garment, or um, this is a, a flat scarf, or you can use it to add volume somewhere. So oftentimes they're used for things like um, shaping around busts and hips, um, or you can just use it to change the direction of your knitting. Uh, so one most common example that I for how I use short rows would be in socks. So um, short row heel is also the most common sock you're going to see in commercial socks. Um, it's where the heel kind of just has that line that goes through the middle of it, and it just kind of goes around. Um, this is you do shorter and shorter and shorter shorter rows on the the side as you're heading into the heel when you get to where you want then you start to expand and you pick th them back up where you had shortened them until you're back at the same length and then you keep going it's the most most commonly used um, heel for commercial socks it's the most commonly used heel for toe up socks um, it was the second heel I learned so for an example I will show you what a um, heel flap more traditional heel flap looks like so in a more traditional heel flap there's the side because that's where you're going to see kind of the biggest difference what you do is you knit uh, a flap then you're going to do a little shaping for the heel or sorry you don't do any shaping for the heel that's you you, you knit your flap you pick up stitches along the side and kind of shape from there. So a, 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 a heel flap is going to look differently. The biggest giveaway for that is this gusset down the side, that that's what you've used there. Um, I have another sock that's actually the exact same yarn as that first one, but this one was knit with a heel flap and the other one was knit with a turned heel. So here's the gusset for the turned heel or um, for the heel flap. And so that's just the easiest way for me to differentiate the two. Um, but this is the, the short row version. The other thing, and I don't have a garment of my own to demonstrate on, but this is a pattern I have, and um, this pattern uses short rows for these little gold bits here. We see where there's a gold uh, wedge there and a gold wedge there for both bust and hip shaping. Those are short rows. So they've used short rows to create more volume and to create some expansion in those areas. Um, that is a common use of short rows in, whoa, should we wait to focus? Common use of short rows in garments is to add fullness to different areas because you can do that and create kind of a, for bust shaping, you create a cup shape. Um, and same, you can add the, some extra fullness to other areas. So um, this pattern though is, is a flat pattern and it uses it in a couple of different ways. So here there was some short row shaping that was done that allowed us to create, take it from, what is this? So this, this red that goes all along. So the red here, you'll see there's a couple of different ang angles. So there, this red here, this that goes all along this bottom section and then up the side section here, that's all um, how you cast it on. So that's all one piece. This here is done by short rows. And then you start moving into this piece where everything is shaped with these angles that go around the center triangle. The other place, one of the other places this uses short rows is on this side piece here. So if you look at it, this red here, this here, they knit into this angle going down. So I'll try and center that a little bit. So this knits into this angle. This is done with decreases and increases. It creates this slant here. So that's all great. 
it's all pulling this direction. Um, where this red line is here though, we start to have a desire for the shaping to change. Now we want this red line to keep going straight, but we want this to come out to the side. Um, which if you look at this angle here, that's the opposite. So we needed to find a way to change that angle. So it was done by short row. So you're, you, you knit all the way along, you stop here, you wrap and turn, you go back to the beginning, you come back, and then you stop short of where you were before to wrap and turn, and that starts pulling the knitting this direction, adds up extra volume. Then when it was to the degree that it's desired for the pattern, you start knitting along everything again. So that's where this second red picks up. You start to knit all along, and then you might be able to see it a little bit where there's a slight difference in the knitting. Right here, those were the wrap and turns being picked up by this red as it went past and then kept going straight down here. So lower that back down again. Um, where this now keeps going down and up and continues on. So I'm in a section now where, as you can see, we're kind of at the top of one of these V's. And now we're going to fill it in because we're getting to the top of the pattern. So in order to fill this in, I need to be able to go back and forth, back and forth in this space um, to be able to fill up that section that that V has created, that, that gap there, um, so that I can then finish straight across the top. So how that's done, what I have been doing, so I've gotten it to a point where I know I'm almost at one of the turns, so we're gonna just finish that off. So this is the wrong side. Um, tell with the color changes that this is the wrong side of the work. Um, it's all garter stitch, so we're knitting on both sides. Um, I knit throwing. Um, I know how to knit both ways, but I find this more comfortable. I also pretty much always use round needles, um, or circular needles, sorry. Pretty much always, all needles are round. Um, use circular needles. I find it really comfortable the way that it sits in my hands. I, I find it easier that I'm not using my elbows to do everything. Um, but yeah, so I throw. I know how to pick. Um, if I'm doing color work, I'll pick with one hand throw with, or pick with one color throw with the other and carry them in different hands. But for regular stuff, this is what's most comfortable for me. It's what I learned as a kid. Um, yeah, and it makes my tension is much more even when I'm using this. So this pattern calls for me to knit to this stitch marker remove the stitch marker, and then I'm going to wrap and turn this stitch. So in order to do that, what I do is I pull the yarn to the opposite side, I slip it, wrap it back around, flip my knitting over, I slip this back onto the needle, this stitch now here, this has not been knit, it's just been wrapped. So we pull the yarn back to the back because we're going to start knitting again, and as you can see on this one, this has not been knit, it's back on the needle I'm going to be knitting with, and you can see there is a little oatmeal colored loop and a little red one going around the base of this stitch, um, almost as if there's been two stitches, it's been knit two together. We will pick that red one up when we come back around, and that'll be um, how we're going to basically get back to the starting position. So that's the wrap and turn. I find, um, I'm pretty sure when I first learned to do it, uh, there either was one of the instructions when they very first learned didn't even have you wrapping, um, which just makes big holes. So you either then have to create something where you're picking it up, which means it pulls things funny, um, or you live with the holes. So depending on what you want, the holes might be good. If you're knitting lace, yes. If you're knitting a gar garter stitch shawl, not so much. Um, and then sometimes you'll see where it's just wrap and turn and people just kind of wrap it um, more like this and there is no around. Um, I find that I don't like that as much. Um, I like to pull it around and wrap it so that it, it creates a, a loop that's opposite from what you would, um, so that it's going from behind your work when you're knitting and then back, you have to pull the yarn back around to the back when you're um, flipping it over and you're going back over again. If that makes any sense. I'll do another one. This is the middle of the work. This is not where I'm supposed to do this, but I can pull it out in a second and keep going. Um, so what you do is you're going to pull the yarn to the front. This is for knit. 
insert from front to back in front, pull it off, wrap again, turn everything over. Now your yarn's in front as if you were going to try to purl it, but you don't want to do that. You want to put it back through, pull it back to the back so that you're going to knit it again and so that you have this nice tight loop around it there in the middle. And that will allow you when you're coming back through to pick it up and when you're back and forth what you'll notice is you start to be able to see that you have these ones with these two loops on them. Um, I'm just doing it all on this row because it's a lot easier to show when the loops are going to be different colors than it is when they're um, both going to be red, um, which is what the rest of it will look like. So that is my little um, introduction to short rows. Um, I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like this kind of video or want to see other things relating to knitting, um, please let me know and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Okay, so we're back again, and now we're at the stage where we will be picking up the stitches. So first off, you can see that the wrap stitches are there, and we're now basically flat. So we've filled in this whole V section. Um, so now I have done some of the pickups already, but you can see these are all wrapped stitches that need to be picked up. So the, there's the wrap and the stitches remaining on the needle. So. In order to do this, what I need to do is pick up the wrap, place it on top, and then basically just knit the two together. That's what I find is the easiest way to do it when going at a wrap stitch in this direction. When you're coming at it from the other direction, I do something a little bit different with them. But this way does seem to be giving me the best fit. Okay, just a second here. Let's take that off. Nope, don't take that off. Okay. There we go. So, do that again. Slowly. So there's the wrap. Put that over the top. Knit those two together, both the wrap and the stitch. So wrap over top, wrap and stitch together. Wrap over top, wrap and stitch together. Wrap over the top, wrap and stitch together. Wrap over the top, wrap and stitch knit together wrap there, not sure if you can wrap over the top, and knit the wrap and the stitch together, and there's the last one, so as you can see on this, there's the wrap, the wrap is red, picking up the wrap, putting it over the top so it's now with the other stitch, and inserting front to knit those two together. So that is that section and if we pull it out what you'll be able to see here is so all of these have been picked up and knit already. These ones are wrapped still. I will pick them up on the way back across. So these ones, um, this half already it was because it was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in shorter and shorter rows to pull them in like this so that it and um, so that makes it shorter on this end, and because I'm decreasing here, I'm not creating a fullness in the middle. I'm actually decreasing it, which means it's going to still lay flat because I was decreasing in the center the same amount. So now it's going to be perfectly even across the top, and I will pick up the rest of these along the other side and finish them there. So I'm going to pull out my pattern to look for my next section, but that is my little tutorial on short rows, uh, showing you how to pick them up um, after the wrapping and yeah so join me next time for something different